Welcome back into the shop. I want to tell you guys real quick that this video is sponsored by my good friends over at Simply Safe, which I'll tell you about more here soon. We are building a custom dovetailed bench for my wife's, for my wife's, for our laundry room. It's not my wife's laundry room, although she does the one that uses it. And if you remember a while back, I milled up a really large sycamore tree. Now that wood dried exceptionally fast, and I now have usable slabs. So I'm pulling one of the top slabs. This isn't the best slab out of that group. Pulling it out and going to use it to make the bench. I think it's a cool wood and I'm excited to do my first project with it. Starting off by just breaking it down, my track saw has been acting very finicky lately. It's about 15 years old and um, it's binding up a lot on the track. I think the, there's a little tensioners on the, on the base there that are not really holding like they should. So you can see me struggling a little bit with it here in the beginning of the video. I'm just going to break down the bench seat and then this bench is 66 inches long and then the two legs. And so once I get it small enough, I'll take it over to the bandsaw. It's way easier on the bandsaw. Uh, this is a big 33 foot by 3 foot tabletop on this saw. Uh, and it'll make quick work of breaking down the rest of the slab. Now once we get the parts broken out, first machine we always go to is the jointer. We're going to flatten the faces of these. This is a 16-inch jointer, so that gives you some perspective of the width of this. Right now, I'm looking for a push stick. seems that I'm always looking for something in my shop. I don't know if y'all can relate to that. So I'll do a couple passes on the face, get it nice and flat, and then flip it up on edge, and edge join it as well. This is the side, so this is a long enough piece to get two side pieces, and then you'll see the, the bench seat here in a second. So once we get a flat face, we can just go to the planer and put that jointed face down and plane, plane it down the thickness. I'm running both the bench seat here and the legs, like I said, through, and we'll get them basically just cleaned up. I'm not looking for any particular thickness here. Uh, I think they ended up at about an inch and an eighth. You get a first look at what the sycamore looks like. This is not quite, I quarter sawn most of the sigma, and that wasn't quite quarter sawn. This is kind of the top board you can see on that ingrain. It's more of a rift. Now what I'm doing here is I've got a marking gauge set to the thickness of my material, and I'm striking a line all the way around. This is the bench seats where I'm going to cut my tails, and we're going to rabbit this. So you're going to see this is a really cool trick if you're um, dovetailing long pieces, wide pieces, uh, like case goods or even this bench seat. This little eighth inch rabbit step here is, is super helpful in transferring your tails to your pin board, which you'll see here soon. And I just do it on the table saw. You can do it with a rabbit plane, hand plane, pretty easily. Uh, but, you know, a table saw and a dado stack makes quick work of it as well. So it's time to lay out tails. I always use dividers. The little notches in your stair rule, those are to set your dividers with. So. I'll set, um, I'll figure out my spacing. So I usually will figure out what my pins are. If I want to do quarter inch pins, I'll add that up, subtract it out of the width of my board and figure out what my tails are going to be. And then I'll set a divider to my tails and a divider to my pins and step it out. And then I've got a one to seven angle on the bevel, transfer that down to my marking gauge line. And that establishes the tails we're going to cut. And once we could do that, we can cut a piece, a line here along the end of the board. This is the most important layout line because when you cut tails, you want to cut them square and straight here. That's the most important part of the cut. If you get a little off on the angle, it's not a big deal because you're transferring that over to your pin board. Uh, aesthetically, it may be noticeable, but as far as the fit, it's not going to affect it. Okay, while I cut these dovetails, I want to tell you about my good friends over at Simply Safe. Who, if you've been with me, if you've watched the channel for a while, you know that Simply Safe has been a great sponsor for a while now. They make amazing security systems. I have one for in both the house and in the shop. I've had great experience with them. I actually know they work because I've had the shop security system go off in the middle of the night and the sheriff show up. So if you should get a call, they have a 24 seven monitoring service. They'll call the local sheriff police department. They can come out. It gives me peace of mind. It really gives my wife peace of mind as we kind of live out in the country a little bit. So um, just knowing that we have an extra level of security and simply safe is helpful in our house. They have glass break sensors, uh, motion sensors, entry sensors, 
water sensors, temperature sensor, fire and carbon monoxide um, sensors. They have HD cameras, so you can fully protect your home or your business with their system. Great thing about it, there's no contracts. You pay by the month, so if you don't want to keep doing it, you don't have to. They have a great interactive monitoring system, so you have an app on your phone that you can access all your cameras. I can access the lock to my door, and I can monitor any activity coming from my house. If someone shows up to my house, I have a front door camera that will send me a notification telling me that motion was detected on that camera, and then I can pull it up right there in the app and see what's going on. Now, being that Father's Day was just a few days ago, and one thing I've loved about the system is I had now have an outdoor camera, so I can see when my kids might be wandering into the shop. I can see where my kids are in front of my house. Uh, in a sense, it kind of gives me a level of security knowing that um, I can actually monitor what my kids are up to on my property. The great thing about Simply Safe is they offer great deals to my viewers. You guys can save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Just visit simplysafe.com forward slash Andy Rawls to learn more. Not only do I appreciate their support, but I appreciate their security systems and how they've helped me uh, add a layer of protection to my shop and to my home. Okay, so we're on the second set of pin. Uh, sorry, we're on the second set of tails. Notice I mark X's on my waist, and I'm cutting on my waistline. If you don't mark those X's, it's so easy to cut on the wrong side of the line and create a lot of issues. So keep that in mind. Always mark your waist side and cut on the waist side of the line. I'm gonna go through and saw all these down with the handsaw, um, and then we'll come back uh, and take the waist out with a coping saw. One thing that is good practice when you do this is to put your good side out. That way if you cut at an angle with the coping saw, you, you got your eye on the outside. You're not gonna cut past your line if you're looking at it, but on the other side of the board, you might tilt and cut in, but that's the inside, no one will ever see it. You can see the rabbit here and kind of how that all comes together. It actually helps in a lot of ways right now. We're chiseling down that shoulder. Uh, you know, when you use the coping saw, you're gonna leave just a tad bit of waste and then you're gonna come out with this chisel and take that waste out. And having that shoulder there kind of gives you a place to put that chisel and get you going. Although you still got to flip the board and come back the other direction. Uh, but you got your layout line, your marking line on that other side that will help you out. All right, so we move on to transferring to uh, our pin board. This process is the most important process of cutting dovetails. And, um, you know, this is where the mistakes will happen. I use blue tape, so I've got a... <laughs> Uh, a line of blue tape on the end of my pin board and now you can see how I'm using that shoulder that we cut on that tailboard to put it in place. Without that, you're just kind of hanging it on there making sure you're in the right spot. It's really difficult. So with it shouldered up on that pin board, I can come with a knife and trace out all those tails, cut them into the blue tape and then it's as easy as coming back and peeling that tape off. Now this is a technique that I've kind of grown to like. It's not not foolproof by any means and I, a lot of, for a long time I just used a really sharp pencil and transferred it with a pencil and you know got decent results that way. I just think I've always done a little bit better um, with the blue tape. So once we get the the waste tape peeled off I can transfer down with a square uh, that way I kind of have an idea of a line to follow with my saw I guess and then we'll start basically the same process as cutting tails except instead of angling you know the angles different um, you're not angling I don't really know how to explain it but it makes you you can make sense of it we're gonna cut down to our layout line uh, and then come back just like we did with the tails and cut out the waist with a coping saw key here is to make sure you're not cutting all the way through your layout line and like I said earlier put the good side of your board towards you um, so I'm looking at the outside here, and that way I know I'm not going to cross my line because I'm, I'm really focused on that. I might tilt the saw and cross it in the back, but that's the back and no one's going to see it. Okay, so coping saw, same thing. Got the good side facing towards me, so I make sure I don't cut into my shoulder or cut too deep. And we're just going to go through and knock this waist out. It speeds the process up if you can get really close to your marking line. Get a little bit further away, it's a few more passes with the chisel to clean it up. 
but uh, that, that just takes practice. Getting, you know, cutting with a coping saw right on your line. It's not super easy. It's not the easiest saw to cut with. So I'll come back with a chisel. This, this is a probably the, the longest part of the process is sitting here and chiseling out a lot of this waste. And you're gonna, you know, we're gonna start on one side and then flip it over. Come back and meet in the middle. You can't chisel all the way through, obviously, because then you'll just blow out the other side and, and create a mess. And what you're looking at here is our first side we're working on. Now, when I flip it and come back and do the other side, you'll probably be able to see it in the video. It almost creates like a peak or a mound there. Uh, and I think I just do that out of habit because it, it's actually not a big deal if you do the opposite of that, right? That way your tail shoulders up a little bit better. I always have to come back and kind of clean that peak off a little bit by hand. And that you can see it on that one right there. It kind of looks like it has a little bit of a peak in the middle. I will say the first time I've really done dovetails on Sycamore and it, it works really, really well. It cuts nicely. Uh, it's a really pretty pleasant wood to work with. Same as we did with the tails. There's some cleanup work to do just to kind of get them all dialed in. Now I will say in the video you're going to see it come together on the first try. It usually takes me two or three test fits and a little bit of pairing here and there to get a good fit. Uh, so this, I cut this in a way that makes it look like I did it on the first try, but I did not. And honestly, these fit just a little bit tight. I could have gone a little looser. Sometimes when you get them this tight, you can start getting little splits uh, trailing off your tail boards or your pins. But luckily on this one, it, it worked out. little brute force and ignorance and they are set and it looks good so a part of this bench is an under shelf that has kind of a cool slope angle to it and it's designed to hold shoes um, I've had this bench in the house now for a week and I haven't seen anyone put their shoes in it yet except for myself so it may never get used for that but I still think it looks cool so I've made a jig out of MDF here you can see the MDFs clamped down I've got a bushing and a 3 8 bit on the router and I'm just riding in that, riding along that jig and that jig has got the angle and the slant that I want. So it's just gonna match that. You'll kind of see here when I pull the jig off what it looks like. I stop, I don't go the whole way because I'm making it out of two pieces with a gap in the middle. because I kind of like the way that'll look. I think it'll look kind of cool. So there you can see the groove for the shelf. Next step, I've milled down the shelf. Um, it's, like I said, 3 8 thick. This is the back piece and just set up a round over bit on the router table. And we're gonna round over those corners and make them match the 3 8 uh, pocket that we cut. And this is the bigger shelf here. This is almost Cortison Sycamore. There's probably gonna be some wood movement. If anything, it's gonna shrink because this wood is basically air dried in my shop. So I'm pretty certain it's going to probably shrink a little bit once it goes in the house. Sorry, I just hit the camera. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, one more little piece of joinery here is a center divider we're gonna put in. We're gonna use a sliding dovetail. So first I'm gonna do just a 3 8 you know, flat cut. Uh, just basically a dado to clear out the waste and then we'll come back right now and then we'll come back with the dovetail bit and that way the dovetail is doing less work right doesn't have to take out all that material you've already cleared it dovetail bits just kind of cutting that outside angle you can see here how it once I get going You'll see that angle cut into it. This is a great joint in this situation where you don't want the piece to pull apart. So there's some mechanical advantage to this because you can't pull apart because it's a dovetail. And we'll put some glue in there and make it even stronger. All right, a quick glue up. This was a little bit tricky to glue up because those little 3 8 shelf pieces were tough to get in position. And they're so thin that with, you know, they, they kind of can rattle themselves out if you're not careful. I didn't, I, 
I would have been able to help that if I'd gone a little bit deeper with my holes. Um, but, you know, live and learn. I do use clamps on the dovetails. I don't think you see it here, but yeah, I do clamp that up and pull it all together. This is my favorite part of any dovetail project. Um, the next day when you get to pull it out and hand plane, your dovetail's clean. Uh, most of the time when you see them glued up, you think, oh, these all look great. And then you go through the process of hand planing them, smoothing them and sanding them, and they turn out looking really good. So it's just fun. I love this process of uh, clearing them down and getting to see your finished work. This is actually quite the shoulder work out here because I'm, I really couldn't get it on the workbench. So working on the ground and really having to press down hard and it got even more intense when I had to come back down here and do some awkward sitting planing stance, um, which was really the only way to get, get after this uh, to clean up the end of those tails. Yeah, a little tired. You can feel it, feel it burning in my shoulders. So we got to cut the sliding dovetail and the, the center divider real quick, set up the router table. You can do this. I made this one a little loose. I was a little disappointed in myself, but um, typically you can kind of bounce the fence over a little bit and sneak up on the fit. I just kind of tried on the first shot and it was, it was a little loose. So you can see the flex there, right? in that shelf, that flex is enough for me to get it in place. And then you can see also the little um, dado I ran down the length of the shelf or the divider. Uh, that matches the gap in the shelf. So it kind of continues that line, continues that profile. No, I think it looks pretty good. So we'll screw that down. Um, that'll hold that in place, use some brass screws. And then there's glue obviously in that sliding dovetail. So the finish on this was kind of an oddball experiment. I used soap. Um, I didn't want to darken the sycamore. I wanted to actually keep it as natural as possible. I wasn't even going to finish it. But I looked up this, found online that I've seen people use soap before. So I ordered some soap flakes, mixed up my own stuff, soaped it up, and probably never do it again. I mean, it worked, but it actually looked pretty good. But uh, it was a, it was a kind of a pain, a little bit messy, and. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do it again. It kind of looks nice in this shot, but it, as far as protection, it's not gonna offer a lot. So we'll see how well it lasts. But it did keep it pretty dang natural and just put a little bit of sheen on the bench. So you feel like you have a finish, but it also looks really natural. So it is, you know, in a sense it's cool, but it offers zero protection. All right, there it is, all done in the laundry room. Uh, you know, we phase one of a kind of remodel in here. We got wallpaper, tile. I made this little hanging hook board uh, for the kids' backpacks. I am thinking about making digital plans for the bench, so if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. I can get that up on the website pretty quick. A big thanks to Simply Safe for supporting the channel. You guys go check them out if you're in need of security system. They offer a great discount to you guys. As always, I appreciate y'all tuning in, and we'll see you next time.